from Nick Collage. I am excited to tell you about my latest finished projects today, including this one. And um, for those of you that watched my previous little making vlog, I posted about Finish It February. So Finish It February is this little challenge I hold kind of just put out into the world for the community where I say, what can we finish in February that's been some lingering whip or can we set some challenge to ourselves to actually finish the projects that we really want to finish? Because what I've noticed is that I do some gift knitting. Um, I have a lot of knitting going at the end of the year. In January is kind of a wash because um, Vogue Knitting Live, like it's just kind of a crazy month. And February feels like this perfect month where it's still cold, at least in a lot of places. And it's a great time to knit, but there's a lot of lingering projects. So I decided to tackle a lot of projects. I also had a photo shoot coming up for spring. So you're going to see a lot of projects that I knit for my business at Collage. If those of you um, who might not know me, I own a small yarn company called Knit Collage where we specialize in hand spun yarns. So I also traveled a bunch in February. I was in India, which um, was good and bad. I had a lot of time to knit while traveling. Um, I did get sick. I think I had the flu, but I never got tested. I had a bad cold. Um, so that definitely knocked me out and cut, cut in on my knitting time, but I still managed to get a lot done. And what I didn't get done, I finished in the last week or two. So, all right. So here is what I finished. I think I'll start off with the one I'm wearing since it's the obvious one. This is the Sorel by Dank Fiber. I may be saying it wrong. It may be Sorel. I'm not sure if it's Sorel or Sorel. So if you know, tell me. <laughs> but I am wearing my Sorel, Sorel, and I have not woven in all the ends yet, but I have given it a good steam and I'm excited to really like share about it and dive into, um, into the style. I really, really loved it. It was such a fun project to knit. And I think part of it was these dip stitches. Um, these were fun to knit, but also the yarn fading was really fun. Now, I think if I'm gonna be totally truthful, my favorite color is up here. So I might have preferred the sweater if it had just been yellow and not um, a fade, but it was really fun to fade. So it made it interesting and it was a fun thing to do while I was knitting, it kept it exciting. So I did really enjoy that side of it. So I went ahead and knit the 38 inch bust size. Now, I believe the pattern called for a size five needle. I'm a super loose knitter, so I swatched on a four and hit gauge exactly. But something went wrong. Something went very wrong in between me swatching and I actually faded in my swatch and I, um, oh, I think I have it, I'll show you. Okay, so you can see Got like a couple ends coming loose, but I faded in my swatch. It actually goes this way, but you get the idea. And I hit gauge perfectly. So I was really excited about this, but I think I cast on after that and I didn't check. I, I don't know what I was, I don't know what I was doing. I didn't check what needle size I had. And I started knitting this on a six. Now, not the neck. The neck I did knit tighter. I think I knit that on a three, um, maybe even a two. But the body, I started knitting on a six. And I didn't really realize it until a bunch later, like here. I was like, oh, this looks kind of big. But I also wasn't sure if... Um, because I had swatched in stockinette, if doing the, you know, I was even looser in this dip stitch. So what you'll see is there's a fair amount of positive ease here, whereas my bust is a size 36, um, 37. So there shouldn't be a lot of positive ease. And that is because I knit this on a size six needle and I just went with it. Um, a lot of times with projects not in my own yarn, I tend to be a little more easygoing on myself. And when it's in my own yarn, I get a little more nitpicky. Um, but for this sweater, I decided to really just go with it. I liked the way it was looking. And, and what that translated into is me deleting some of the chart 
some of the dip stitch chart. And I just kept trying it on because it's knit from the top down. And that worked out pretty well for me. Um, I'm not sure how many I deleted in the end, not many, but um, I really like the way it fits. And I think because I went with a more cropped body, um, I like it a little bit looser anyway. So I, I'm gonna show you my yarn and I have this, decided to just go with a simple notebook for keeping track of all my projects. So I've got my projects in here and I've got um, a page for this sweater. So the first yarn I used was this, this is what I've used throughout the whole thing, the mohair. And this is Chili Knits, I got it at VKL, I really love it. It's called Fluffy Lace, 65% kid mohair, 35% silk in the colorway happy. I love it. I have another skein. So could I knit a sweater in mohair with one skein? I doubt it. It's 546 yards. I love it so much. Um, so it's just really happy and it has these like little speckles throughout. It's so good. And then this was the first color of yarn at the top. And this is called Fur Wahlberg, I don't know how to say that, dyed especially for Stephen and Penelope. So I got this at Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam online. It's in color Gold Rush and it's their Merino Swirl yarn. So yeah, it's, it's really pretty. I mean, it's a simple yellow. I'm super into yellow right now. So I like it and I like the way that this together made it even more neon and crazy. <laughs> Okay, so then the next yarn, which you can see here has blue in it. I can't find it, it's in the house. I have a little extra, um, it's hiding in my house. But I can tell you what it is. It's called Ushita, U Ushi Ushitita. I also got this from Stephen and Penelope. I'll show you the label. You see that? It's this one, okay? And it's Vanilla Sky. And it's 100% superwash merino wool. So that one, also really pretty, more muted. It has some orange and like teeny bit of blue in it, which I say, I think I was the most worried about adding the blue, um, but I think it works. And you can see I started fading midway through the yoke. Um, most people started fading a little lower, I think, but I was fully into color two by the end of the yoke. So really fun. And apologies if you're seeing some ends. I haven't gotten that far yet, but I did block it. <laughs> I was really excited to post it. Um, okay, so then the third color is this amazing color. Oh my God, this is my most favorite thing ever. I mean, maybe ever. This is Ritual Dyes. I got it at Brooklyn General when I did an event there. And it is called Libra. And it is a fingering two-ply yarn. Uh, the yarn is called Maiden, the color is called Libra, and I freaking love it. Um, I just love lavender with mustard. So really fun. And this is um, really, you can see this a lot on the sleeve here. I'm fading it here. You can see it's being faded here. Um, it's right here on the body. Yeah, it's here. You can see that. So the bottom two colors I really didn't use a ton of. So this color was number three, and then number four is another Fur Valborg, Valborg yarn from Stephen and Penelope, and it's Merino Swirl in color Hepburn. So this one's really pretty too, more saturated, and you really see it more on the sleeve because the sleeves are longer than the body. So I faded on the sleeves, midway through the sleeves, and it's in the cuff. And then at the very end, like there's only a couple rows of the body where you actually only have that yarn. Um, so really love the way it turned out. I, I have enough of these yarns left. I wonder if I can make like a pair of socks or something. I don't knit socks, generally. I haven't done it yet. So I don't know, but maybe, maybe I would do it. Um, so the only other big modifications you might see is that the photos for the pattern, the sweater is really fitted. So I knit this on a size six. Um, 
already a loose knitter. So mine is the second size, 38 inch bust size, but it's pretty, um, it's got a lot of positive ease. I made it a very short body length. So it's, it's like an inch or two lower than my super high-waisted, 10-inch high-waisted jeans. So it's it's pretty cropped, but not to the point where I feel like I'm showing a lot of tummy or skin. And then the sleeves, instead of doing a straight sleeve, I went totally rogue and I increased at the elbow quite a bit. Um, I did about four increased rows and I increased every six stitch. Um, and then in between the increases, I, I knit for five or six rows and increased again. And then right at the edge, when I went down to less stitches, I knit one, knit two together all around, and I did that twice. So two decrease rows to get the narrow cuffs. And the narrow cuffs, I think you have to knit on this super small needle to get it to be really tight. So I'm really happy with it. I wanted to make the body a little more um, fashion forward. I don't know. I, it's not that it's not fashion forward. I'm just not a super fan of that body length. So um, I really love it. I'm excited about it. And I love yellow. So that is my Sorel. And I hope this inspires you to knit it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, it was a blast. I thought the pattern was so well written. And um, only thing is there's no schematic on it. So um, that was a little tricky, but otherwise it was really fun to fade and the dip stitch tutorials was, was really good. So that is my Sorel. Now I'm going to kind of fly through what else I finished in February. Full disclosure, I just finished this. So this is well into March, March 10th today. Okay. So let me show you those right now. Okay. So this was one I was working on. You might remember this. I had hoped to finish this. This is my kaleidoscope sweater. So this is in the running for the spring knit along. I'm hosting a survey this week. So please, if you, if you haven't yet, go and vote for the style you like most. So this is so cute on. I love it. I love the way the sleeves came out. Um, I did a steam block on it and we are currently in testing on this. Um, I'm testing this size all over again because I use my stash yarn. So trying to figure out kits when you use stash yarn is of course a little bit tricky, but um, we're gonna figure it out. And it's it's not terribly hard for us because we have the mini skein sampler kits. So this is all of our hand spun yarn. I'm not sure how many colors I use, probably 20, something like that. Um, I tried to use more of the wildflower yarn, which is our cotton yarn, to keep it really spring feeling. And I just adore it. I've been wearing it a lot. Slight flared body, um, pretty cropped, short sleeve. So the pattern is gonna come this option, but also within the pattern, there's the um, directions on how to knit a straight body, if you wanna do straight, and then longer sleeves too, if you want just a straight sleeve. So that's super fun. So I knit that and I wove in all the ends, which was a feat. The other big thing I knit in February was my Valentine's Day sweater, which I think we're calling the um, big love sweater. So I knit this in the size 40 and I tested it for us and I love it. We released these kits in February. I was traveling in India when I finished it. It was a lot colder there than I thought it was going to be. So I wore it the entire time. <laughs> and it's, um, it just fits me really well. It's not super tight, but it's, it's perfect. And it uses our sister yarn. So you can see the ivory is our sister. And you can use um, Spun Cloud too. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Spun Cloud. And then this is Sister, the Jaipur Rose. So this is French Vanilla. This is Jaipur Rose um, Sister. And then this is a mini skein kit here, I believe, in uh, mauve, mauve, color mauve. And this is the back. So it's Intarja. So I did a video tutorial that goes along with the pattern on Intarja. Um, it's a lot of fun. So the kits and the pattern are available at knitcollage.com. And really love it. Got a lot of compliments on it too. So that one is alive and well. Now here are the other small things I finished. I finished this hat. This is the Happy Hearts Day hat. Um, I love it. I actually knit like four of these, but I'm just going to show you one. <laughs> um, 
I love this one because it has a fold over tubular um, edge, which is really cute. It kind of makes it a little bucket hatty and is one of the pom poms. So this is a free pattern on our site. Um, yeah, super, super, super easy, super cute. Okay, this is another one that I tested while we were in India. While I was in India, it only took me about two days to knit. This is called Cables Are For Lovers. Cables Are For Lovers shawl, which I released last week. So you can see her. It's really, really a cute one. Um, I used all wildflower, a wildflower mini kit for the um, mini kit portion, but the pattern calls for a mixed yarn mini kit. You can do whatever you want there. I did give this a heavy block. I like to give pointel shawls a heavy block. So you can wear this however you see fit. Um, really, really cute. I haven't messed around with it yet a lot, but I think something along those lines. Yeah, it's really, really cute. And we did release that pattern last week. So that would have been like March three, March two or three. Um, so this is up on the site as a pattern and it's one skein of the spun cloud, which is, I have it in lavender dust here and a mini skein kit. So you can see there's a big pointel detail and then a cable detail along the bottom edge. So yeah, I really, really like that one. It's just simple. It's great for beginners that want to try out cables, but maybe not in an intimidating way, like on a sweater. <laughs> um, it's a super easy pattern. So really love that one and fun for trying out a lot of different types of yarn as well. Okay, so we're down to the final two. This is the spring fling cardigan that I knit. This is in the running for the knit along as well. I hope this or the pullover version is gonna win. I absolutely love it. So um, we are in the middle of testing this and working out the yarn usage and the sizing. So this is still very much along with the kaleidoscope TBD, TBD for spring. I believe this is gonna be size two that I knit. Um, and it is our spun cloud with our wildflower mini kit. So if you're thinking about our spring knit along, this is gonna be a really fun one. Um, and I hope it gets a lot of votes because I think it's my top pick along with the kaleidoscope that I just showed you. And I really wanna do the pillow if anyone else is, uh, I'll link to the survey right here in the show notes. Um, but yeah, the pillow, I think will be really fun too because we've never done a pillow. But yeah, I love this so much. It's got this really cute flared edge and I love the mixed yarn along the border. Um, super cute, yeah. That's, I think that's a crochet edge, yeah, awesome. Okay, the last thing I knit, which um, this one was down to the wire for the knit along. So it had a steam, but not a full bath for blocking, but I am very into it. So this is what we are calling, what are we calling it? I think we are calling it, I wrote it down. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna have to circle back. On that, let's see. I bet I can pull it up online here really quick. What are we calling it? Okay, it is the Secret Garden Cocoon Sweater. Secret Garden Cocoon Sweater, which someone recommended. And I truly love it. So this is the back. This is the back. You start from the center and you knit out. So Laurel designed this. She designed um, all of the sweaters that I've knit in our yarns and it goes like this. So we're gonna have it in four sizes and four sizes is gonna accommodate a lot of different body types. Um, it just depends on how much ease you want, but it's one of those sweaters that's sort of like one size fits a lot, which is how we did our garden party sweater. I think the size medium large fit most people. When I went to in shop events, it fit a lot of people. So this is it. Um, yeah, it just kind of like that. So you can see the back, hopefully. Um, yeah, really, really loving it. I really, really love it. And I think as, um, as spring, summer approaches, good for cool nights. 
And it's really fun in it because kind of like the sun woven sweaters we've done, it's a sampler. So you're trying a lot of different stitches and you're learning a lot of different new skills. At the same time, you get to try all these different yarns together. There's a lot of cotton wildflower in it. So our, our hope and our idea is to keep this super lightweight and springy. So there's not a ton of wool, although you are mixing some wool in it. And I really like mixing in the wool because I think it gives it a little bit of texture and life. And sometimes cotton yarn can look a little dead and heavy. So I like to mix it in to get that balance, if that makes any sense. Okay, so that is everything I knit in February. I mean, it was a, it was actually a lot, a lot. And I did have to put this on the back burner because of our photo shoot, but I still finished it and I absolutely love it. Maybe these yarns are gonna be something else in the future. I have no idea. <laughs> so I, I do have a bunch of test knitting to do for the spring knit along. I am testing, um, I'm gonna be testing the kaleidoscope and I think I'm gonna test that honeycomb shawl because I haven't knit that yet. I always like to knit it one time before the kits go live, even though we have other testers just for myself. So I'll be knitting those, but those are big needles. So I can usually bang those out really quickly um, at this stage in my life. <laughs> been knitting with these yarns for so long, but I do have a lot of things planned. So I'm going to insert a picture um, of, this is what's in my queue. I'm not sure what order I'm going to do this in, but this is what's in my queue. I would like to knit the Majestic Mountain by Stephen West. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but I have a ton of yarns picked out. It's like my Penguano in that I would be mixing stash in my yarns and just making it like crazy art amazingness. And the colors I have are exactly the colors I did for this, which I'm really into right now. So it's like mustard and dusty purple um, and ivory. So I think that would be really, really fun, but it's more like a, like a really long-term project. So I'm not sure I want to do that before the knit along. I think I'll probably wait until after the knit along finishes um, because it's like, it's an intense project. So the other thing I'm going to be working on and casting on, which I had hoped to cast on in February, but I didn't get to, is my ranunculus. So this is, I'm just going to show this. So this is it, ranunculus by um, Knit Cafe Midori. And I'm going to be using this primrose yarn, which I believe is a worsted weight. And then this is um, Neighborhood Fiber Co., Neighborhood Fiber Co. and I think it's a silk mohair. So I do have all the labels. When I finish it, I'll make sure to tell you exactly what it is. But I've heard from everything I've heard, this is a very quick knit. I bought the yarn at Rhinebeck, so I feel like that needs to be my next non-knit collage knit because I've heard it's really fun. It flies. I may actually gift it to a family member because I don't need another sweater, but I do just enjoy it so much. So I do want to knit it. So the other thing I'm, I'm thinking about, which has been in my queue for a while, is I want to knit a baby romper for my friend, one of my friends who's having a baby. So this is yarn I got in Paris last year from La Bien Ami. I believe it is um, Merino Aaron in color smoke. So I think I have enough here for a pretty, pretty decent sized one. And I have um, a pattern from Michelle Puff in mind. It's just going to be one of those like bathing suit type onesies. So I've got a due date of end April there. So that may go first, <laughs> but it's a baby thing. So it should be fast. <laughs> so then the only other thing I thought would be fun to show you is I am thinking about the bouquet sweater by Junko. I don't know how to say her last name, but I will certainly link to it here. Um, inspired by the people that make this yarn, which I think is, um, it's called Fuzz Family by Creo. Um, I'll link to them. I, I saw this at VKL and had to have it. So it's a very beautiful sweater. The floats are on the outside for the color work section, which terrifies me because my color work isn't the neatest. So I'm looking forward to this as a fun challenge. I'm not realistically sure when I will get to that, but I'm really excited to knit that because I think I'll learn a lot along the way. 
So that's what's in my queue. That's what I finished for February. I am really trying to document here because it's so fun to really look back at the end of the year and say, okay, these are all the things I knit. This is, um, this is what I accomplished. And it's really fun to be able to share here with you too. So I'm hoping to do this monthly and just have these check-ins where I can share all the things. If you have questions, feel free to post them below. And thank you so, so much for tuning in. Okay, bye-bye.